latest version that no one before is the new one of clay. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know and love China clay. There it is right there. You're yeah. happy. Uh, how about headband clay? That's my personal favorite. You like that one? Yeah. Okay. Parade clay was a good one, too. That was a good one. He was having a very good time. Yeah. Without further ado, okay. the latest addition to the collection, ladies and gentlemen, clay clay. We got clay clay here, and we got clay Rocco. And so it's the, it's the newest the newest craze taking over the world here. It's a little miniature. A little clay clay right there. Carmen, I don't, I don't think that's going to catch on. No, it's the next big, you know the bobblehead thing? You remember that? Yeah. It's over. It's done. The bobblehead thing's not over. It's, uh, it's done. It's all washed up. We got clock. Clay Johnson's become one of the Bay Area's most popular athletes ever. But a man who coached him growing up in Southern California helped pave the path to the NBA. <laughs> I remember first meeting him, and he was he seemed stern. He seemed about his business, but as I got to as I got older, we developed a great friendship. Here was this young, 14 or 15 year old skinny kid, and he was so quiet and reserved. Uh, as a freshman and sophomore, he he basically spoke in three or four word fragments. But I'm just blown away now. When I see him after a game at a press conference or a commercial for chocolate milk, I'm just blown away. You did it. I think I grew so much mentally in my four years at Santa Margarita, going from a really shy kid who probably couldn't put two sentences together in my first two years to my senior year, you know, leading the, the team, captain. Uh, going to state championship, you know, taking on that role as the go-to guy, how to be coachable, how to work within a, you know, team frame, and um, how to be a leader, those three things. And he uh, really preached, you know, one for all, for one, and that I carry that with me to this day. If we're teaching them how to be good teammates, if we're teaching them how to be good people, and we're teaching them how to play the game the right way, the wins and losses take care of themselves. Coach Bus just taught me how to stay patient, how to play for, not for yourself but for your others, and uh, just do it as a unit because um, he always preached how it's not an individual sports, not tennis, it's not golf. You gotta look out for the 15th man just like you would do the, the starting five. He challenged us to, you know, never be afraid, play for one another, and have fun while doing it because it's some of the most special times of our life at one of the purest stages, which would be a teenager playing with your high school friends. I think I'm more joyful or happy because I knew this was something that he inspired, even though we didn't talk about him being a pro when he was here. Uh, it was a dream and a goal, and he's, he's achieved that. He's living his dream, so I know the whole Santa Margarita community is very, very proud of him. So we can all agree to retire Clay Clay, right? That's, that's, just, that's just garbage. That goatee, come on, man. That's terrible. My goodness. All right, where do I start? Wow. First, I want to thank the coaching core for having us. This is such a special honor. I didn't even know much about it before I came, but to see what you guys are doing with the communities around the nation, it's unbelievable. And um, we'd love to do stuff in the future. And um, just thank you again. Thank the other coaches who are here in our presence. Us athletes would not be at this stage without you guys. We, uh, we're not self-made. We all have had a ton of help along the way, whether, whether people want to believe it or not. And uh, before I was ever an NBA champion, I was a state champion. And that journey was not easy. Uh, it started when I was about 14 years old, moving from Portland, Oregon to Orange County, California. My dad got a job at the Lakers. We went to visit San Margarita, asked about the basketball program met with Jerry and everything, he looked at me, he's like, oh, okay, Michael Thompson's son, you know, Lakers great, NBA champion. Well, Clay, you can start on the freshman team and uh, earn, your way, earn your way from there. So 
everything I got in high school, Jerry made me work for it. And I'm so thankful he did because I realized that he wasn't coaching me hard. He was coaching me to, to a bigger, better level. He wanted to see me in the Pac-10. He wanted to see me in the NBA. But he just wanted me to, you know, talk and say a few words. So I, I remember my, when I was about 14, 15, I tried to dodge the guy. I was like, oh, coach the bus, man. I really don't want to talk. I'm going to take the stairs. I see him on the elevator. I'm going to just go around. But by, uh, by, by my junior year, coach made me be the team captain. He forced me to do it. He's like, Clay, you're putting the C on your chest. You're going to go talk to the officials before every game. You're going to shake their hands, look them in the eyes. You're going to be a man. I'm like, yeah, coach, you know I don't like to talk. You know, I just want to go out there and get buckets. But he made me do it. And then by my senior year, we were actually communicating. We actually had full conversations. We actually became great friends, especially through the recruiting process. I remember I got my first offer, and I wanted to, I wanted to take it so bad because I kind of came on late. It was to Nevada. And I'm like, Coach, I got this offer, man. I'm so excited about it. He's like, hold up. Be patient. You're one of the most talented players I've ever seen. It will come. Just be patient. And obviously, it did. But I'm just so thankful for Coach DeBusk. He always preached fundamentals. I remember my junior year, I thought I was hot stuff coming off the AU circuit, playing with a bunch of great players. We get back to San Margarita practice, he has doing jump stops and passing and all the most basic stuff you do at YMCA camp. I'm like, God, coach, come on, man, I just want to hoop. Six years later, I'm playing for Steve Kerr, and we're doing the same dang thing. So, so, coach, so coach actually knew something that I did. I was like, man, I was doing this since I was 14. Coach the bus was on to something. And uh, I love Coach the bus because he ran a very tight program, no nonsense. And he used to tell us how spoiled we were, how soft we were, being from Orange County. Like, we couldn't handle these LA kids. You go to Riverside, get smacked, you just tell us we're soft. And I was like, dang, we did need that. And it all came together into a state championship my senior year, and I'll never forget that. You know, I played in Arco Arena to about 2,000 fans. I thought that was everything, you know. Playing. Now I go, when I would go to Arco, I'm like, God, we played at Kings tonight. But when I was 18, I was so excited to get there. It was the biggest, I, couldn't, I can't tell you how proud I was to be there. I still have my state ring, I wear it with my other rings, but I'm so proud of that thing because uh, I was able to win with my brother, with Coach DeBusk, and it was just such a great time. Luckily, I set a record, no big deal, but it was just, it was a lot of fun. And um, just the memories I have of Coach DeBusk and staff are, are, will last forever. So without further ado, here's Coach DeBusk. Thank you so much.